G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and here we go with the next round of the Manufacturer Series currently going on in Gran Turismo Sport. It is of course the Exhibition Series so it doesn't really count for anything except for your exact number of points. We find ourselves in Group 4 again, driving the Toyota 86 of course, and if you remember the last time out in the Toyota 86, we were at Southern Sea. It wasn't great, the power track there wasn't great, we're at Bathurst now which is another power track, but it does have a nice handling section in there for us. Right, with that in mind, let's go out for the qualifying session. As you can see, my beautiful car in the garage there. It is a lovely looking car, this Toyota 86. I would, in fact, probably buy one in real life if I could afford it. Maybe part of my dream car garage one day. But let's focus back on here. So Slipstream is going to be the name of the game here. I'm. I'm okay through the mountain section, a lot of corners there for the handling of this Toyota, uh, but the straight, so sector one and sector sort of three and four, I'm gonna need the slipstream. And we have found that off the back of Corey driving the uh, Mercedes SLS up ahead. We're coming through turn one, massive kick of oversteer, have a look at that. We do correct it and we do manage to keep in the slipstream of Corey, but that's gonna lose us a bit of time, perhaps two tenths. Uh, there's someone in the slipstream behind. I'm gonna fast forward this lap just to get to the end and have a look. So we're coming up through this handling section now, through the uh, through the park section, down the hill. Lovely, forest elbow on the straight. Here is where the slipstream really is required. You, the Toyota 86 loses about two, three tenths, just on raw pace down the Cottonwood straight alone. But as we're coming up towards the line, we've still got the slipstream of Corey. To 11.6, we're only a tenth off provisional pole position and that was a mistake at turn one so as we head through turn one this time mistake free perhaps a little slow but I was obviously uh, my senses were probably a little bit heightened coming off the mistake I made on the previous lap so we're going to keep with this lap and keep going as we're heading up the mountain straight up towards turn two breaking just after the 100 meter board here and you kind of just roll you don't even roll off the brake you just come off the brake and get it into the corner. Um, that's what I was doing, chucked it in. And there's a lot of grip in these Group 4 cars, especially this Toyota here. So, you know, you could just chuck it into the corners and it, it'd stick most of the time. But as we're heading up through the park section, we've still got the slipstream. So you can see on the exit of turn four there, the cutting, we have the power application on the exit there and that is flat out all the way to McPhillamy Park here of turn 10 but you can see one two three cars all bin it they've given us a slipstream then they've all binned it and given us the downforce for the downhill section so that was absolutely ideal and we did the downhill so well that we've now got the slipstream of Diego so we had slipstream or we're gonna have slipstream for the entirety of the lap except for the downhill S's. That is pretty much ideal. So this car is really good through the downhill and I was managing to gain on heaps of people through that downhill section. So I really had no issues going through there without slipstream. But once I was in slipstream, I kind of lose the downforce. The car kind of loses it, the advantage it has on the power cars that aren't so good through the downhill S's. So the fact that I lost the slipstream down the hill just gave me the advantage. I've got the slipstream down the straight, plus the advantage in the handling section. This is pretty much an ideal lap, and I've still got the uh, slipstream of Diego, and as we head through the final corner, we do that absolutely beautifully. Second gear for the final corner, because it's a little bit more off camber than the first. Heading up towards the line. Boom, baby, pole position, 211.4. Absolutely rapid for the Toyota 86, and that is, I think that's faster than my time trial time. So I will take that any day of the week, and as you can see by the end, we managed to keep it by about half a tenth over iRacer GT. But as always with these manufacturer series combinations, let's enjoy the introduction.
lovely. As always, we meet the cars on the grid, and for the first time ever, or a, a long... It's been a very long time since you've seen this, so let's savour it like that. R4M smokescreen on pole position. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to savour that image for the rest of my life. I'm going to print it and put it above my bed. I'm going to engrave it on my gravestone. It's just that amazing. But let's start the race. This race is a bit of a slow burner, to be honest. This track is very long for these type of cars, the, with a lap time of over 2 minutes 10. It's a very long track for these cars, and it's almost too big, but it is my home circuit, of course, so we will at least have that advantage over the Japanese players. But as you can see, immediately off the start, uh, the Volkswagen Scirocco, driven by iRacer, has the advantage at the moment, and that's going to be the case. So he didn't really get my slipstream up Mountain Straight, but I'd imagine he's going to get it off Conrod, or down Conrod, and I'm just going to let that, that one happen. So the, that Volkswagen Scirocco is an FF car, front-engined, front-wheel drive, and um, they're going to be very strong off the start. They have to be, because the tyre drop-off on those cars is massive. You've got the front wheels doing the uh, power and the steering. They just wear out like nothing. Uh, wear out like nothing else. So they're going to be strong off the start. Very good in a straight line as well to kind of counteract that time loss you get, or well, they get through the corners. So you can see through the park section, he's dropped off six tenths. So that's exactly what I'm talking about. The FF cars are not great at handling. They're very good power cars though, as we slightly mess up the S's. A little bit too much weight transfer. And you can see iRacer is back firmly in the picture. So let's head through Forest Elbow. I was kind of hoping I could have broken the toe through the... Um, handling section of the mountain there and that would at least sort of help me keep this first position at the moment but you can, but you can see iRacer is under three tenths behind with the slipstream I just indicate to the right to tell him to go right and he makes his way past I'm not fighting or defending that one I know he's going to be strong off the start but I expect him to come back to me later in the race um, thanks to the tyre wear that that car will suffer now speaking of the tyres uh, very uninteresting strategy I guess would be the right word for this race here so you've got we've got 16 laps here so it's a very long race 16 laps of an over two minute lap time you're looking at 35 minutes sort of thing so very long race and it's a no stop the pit loss here is way too long now um, to for a one stop to be even remotely competitive the pit loss used to be about four to six seconds and now it's 19 so if you're going in for the pit stop, there's no way you're catching up 19 seconds back to where you were. So you only got to lose out of the pit stop. So this is a bit of a tyre saver, and that's why I just allowed that Scirocco to get past. I mean, he was going to get past anyway down the straight, but I didn't fight it. Just because I knew the tyre wear is pretty high by the end. Just because we're spending so long. 16 laps on the medium tyre here, and that is just no good for those FF cars there. But as we're coming up into the park section now, I'm going to turn my attention behind because iRacer GT has broken the slipstream and there's probably no way I'm going to be able to gain this back at this stage in the race. So I'll just put a bookmark on that and come back to this uh, bit of a fight for first position a little bit later, or ideally we can come back to it. Hopefully we can sort of stay out of trouble and keep with iRacer to an extent. I'm going to look to the gap behind to Corey Hack, so it's still over 9 tenths at this point, it's over a second actually, so that's out of slipstream, which is going to be good until here, the car just slides, the back end just slides down the dipper, the complete wrong direction, and I end up clouding the barrier, and that is no good for the point that I was about to make. I wanted to keep Corey Hack out of my slipstream because I knew once he's in it, there's going to be no real way for me to defend it down Conrod Strait. So Conrad Strait, 1.9 kilometres, it's so long, and this car, uh, the Toyota 86, this car that I'm driving here, being a handling car, is going to suffer down the straights, and like I said previously, it's about outright pace, three tenths behind an, a power car, and with slipstream, yeah, that's opened up massively, you can probably almost gain the entire slipstream distance to the Toyota 86 down the Conrad Strait at least. Mountain Strait is a bit shorter, but it's still a very large slipstreaming opportunity so once Corey got past 
It was a very sort of stagnant affair for eight laps, or I guess it was six and a bit, but we're now on lap eight. I just stuck into the slipstream of him, and I was not really able to get past, because the straights, I was able to keep up with him, I wasn't able to catch up and overtake him. Um, but we made a mistake on the exit of Forest Elbow there, went a little bit deep, and you can see that Mansell drift behind, he's driving a white Ferrari, is a lot closer to me than I am now to Corey, and he's making his way past, so that is another handling car, but it's a little bit better in a straight line than the Toyota 86 here, so given that he's got the slipstream, and I don't anymore, or I didn't, from the back of Corey, he uh, makes his way past uh, quite convincingly, but you can see he goes a little bit deep there into the chase, and we're right on his tail, it gives me a flash of the hazards, probably to either apologise or say thanks for the bump, but plunging into the final corner, let's focus on not going into the back of him, and now um, we're sort of back as it were, I've got the slipstream of a faster car in front, and uh, that is where we suck until lap 10. So we flash ahead to lap 10 as the Ferrari catches up to the Mercedes, and he goes for the move around the outside of the chase, around the outside of turn 21, absolutely beautiful move there, if I do say so myself, and that has just slowed the pair up ahead just enough for me to grab the slipstream off the back of Corey again. So you can see this race, it's a very, very much a slow burner, and this kind of race is, it's a no stop, there's no strategy, so you're essentially just minimising your time loss until the end of the race where you begin to fight for your positions. So this is where the race begins to kick off. There's a little bit of contact between the Mercedes and the Ferrari. The Ferrari comes back on in front of the Mercedes, slowing them both up, and I decide to go down the outside. I had nowhere else to go. And into the braking zone of the final corner, I'm looking to go around the outside of the Ferrari. I leave space on the inside, he bumps me half onto the grass. Yeah, that move in the past has historically not gone well with myself finding, uh, finding myself into the barrier. But then coming into the first corner, Ferrari comes across, edges me onto the grass into the braking zone. And I'm completely hung out to dry there, and there's nothing I could have done there, really. I could have backed right out of it. I suppose that's probably what I should have done, but I felt as though... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say I felt as though the move could have worked, but I actually don't think it could have, in hindsight. But just a bit of an awkward racing moment there. I felt as though the Ferrari came across while I was on the outside a little bit and kind of edged me onto the grass. Um, so that was a bit awkward. We'll probably have a look at the replay a bit later at the end. But this race is now kicked off. I'm down in six. I qualified on pole position. I'm down in six. But I'm only 4.3 seconds off the leader, which is still iRacer at this point. And we're all fighting here. I've been stuck in this fight. So there's about four different cars in front of me at the moment. And then iRacer up in the lead. And we've all been fighting. We're still only four seconds off. So that just goes to show iRacer has had the clear air. But even though he's got the clear air and I've been back here fighting, I'm still only about four seconds. And actually, through the first half of this lap, that's gone down to 3.7 seconds. So I believe the tyres on the Scirocco that iRacer is driving at this point has gone off. And um, it, we're, we're definitely going to be looking at trying to make our way forwards in the last few laps here. And obviously, iRacer is soon going to be in the picture. We run slightly deep into Forest Elbow and we get a poor run out onto the straight and the Mazda Atenza up ahead just streaks away and it was the case until the final corner of that same lap where he runs very deep and I just get the undercut. Beautiful. So I managed to make my way past the Mazda and that just opens myself up in some clear air. So we're just going to focus on getting turn one right. If we can break the slipstream to the Mazda or at least get a significant margin that will be probably helpful because I want to be in this clear air as I head through the handling section that could hopefully get me a bit closer to the pack up ahead. So the slipstream went down to about seven tenths to the Mazda behind and Mountain Straight is not quite long enough to catch up that whole gap. You can see he closed it to nearly three tenths, about three and a half tenths. Very significant gain down a relatively short Mountain Straight in comparison to Conrod at least. So. That is uh, concerning. We're definitely going to have to watch that slipstream range just on the exit of turn one because turn two is an overtaking opportunity. The outside of turn two drops off massively. There's negative camber all the way to the outside. Uh, so there's definitely no hanging it around the outside. So if someone sends it up the inside of turn two, that is that move done and dusted before it even begins, to be honest, because there's no real way to defend it. Um, but as we head through this mountain section, we just got to focus on the group up ahead. So as long as they get caught in this fight, so... Oh, actually, 
put a bookmark on that. Have a look at this. That was a close moment there. I hit the wall on the inside on the turn in point to the S's at turn 11. And it just put me sort of out of my rhythm all the way down the hill. And I came very, very close to hitting the barrier of turn 13. But I managed to just save it. But unfortunately, that just leaves the Mazda Atenza about five and a half tenths behind. And I'll be completely honest, I reckon he's going to catch it up. But we'll see how we go towards the bottom of the straight. Now, the point I was making before, um, the pack up ahead, if they continue to fight, they'll end up losing time and I'll be able to catch up to them. That's what I'm hoping will happen with only two laps to go after this. Heading through the chase, Mazda catches right up to my rear wing and I just graze the grass. And that's a bit of a mistake on my behalf. And someone's actually made an extra mistake on the exit there. Corey Hack and I come back on in a bit of an awkward spot and Ryan just makes contact with him. Um, and that's a bit awkward. So I've got dirt all over my tyres. I'm going to try and get them off. But you can see this race has kicked off massively. The group at the front is very much imploded. There's actually a penalty up ahead as well. Three seconds. And he's going to serve that, whoever that is, on Mountain Straight of this lap. It's iRacer GT. So after... Starting the race off very strong, keeping it into the lead for at least 13 laps it was. He's found himself with a bit of a dodgy penalty, I assume, but of course, uh, I haven't seen that incident, but here we go. I'm going to grab the slipstream off the back of him while he's slow, just pull out, and well, that's it. The Scirocco is probably not going to have the tyre wear at this stage to keep up with the FR drivetrain of the Toyota 86 here, so that's probably the end of iRacer in terms of this race here. So I really don't think he's going to be able to catch up. We're just going to watch that gap to iRacer behind, or it's now actually changed to Nishi. But as we head through the cutting, turn four, that gap has opened up to over eight tenths to the guy in fifth, so there's no real chance iRacer is going to catch back up. On the end of lap 15, Diogo makes a mistake and goes way too deep into the chase. So he's got dirt all over his tyres, and I knew right here, then and there, that I was going for this move if I caught up. I didn't quite catch up, though, so I'm going to try and get him on the exit because he's not going to have the grip. He just comes across and completely blocks me there, uh, but he does redress. Thankfully, I was flashing my headlights at him. What well, wasn't very happy with that. I did, of course, consider the possibility of oversteer he got, but it, he looked pretty stable. He looked pretty glued to the road, and the fact that he redressed it probably tells me that it was a mistake on his behalf, at least. So uh, I can at least um, thank him for redressing. And that just releases me into third place. So I'm back on the podium. So as long as we can keep it clean throughout this lap here, um, we're going to bring home a third place. And honestly, I didn't... I didn't come into this race expecting anything I knew that this was more a power track than anything else so I thought I'll give it a go it's my home circuit um, I'll give it a go at least so I did and when I decided that I was going to give it a go I thought well it's going to be another sudden your road track C sort of situation a power track on a, he uh, a handling car on a power track sorry and I wasn't expecting much I was kind of hoping Maybe I could qualify in the midfield at best and just keep myself there, or maybe top 10 in my lobby. I, I would I, I would have uh, taken and would have considered a successful journey. I know this track has a more of a handling section than Southern Your Road Track C does, so I can at least um, have, a, have a little bit higher expectations of this car here uh, than I can at Sardinia, but I still expected myself to be trundling close to the back or mid-pack. So considering that I've found myself up on third up in the podium we've still managed to keep ourselves here and there's no danger of being overtaken down here by a slipstream so the fact that i'm in third i'm actually gonna take it so i've only got four quarters to go the three turn complex of the chase in consisting of turn 20 to 22 and then murray's corner turn 23 as we head through here meet that apex beautifully definitely more understeer with the tyres and actually that's one thing in this race I went pretty hard on my tyres so it's good at this point that I wasn't fighting because I don't I probably don't think I have the pace at this point but as he head through the final corner a little bit of oversteer from the Mazda and I got my hopes up for a second but he easily corrects it and I come across the line in third I pick myself up a podium how good's that so I know I qualified first and I probably honestly feel as though I could have won that I felt like if I just played it a little bit differently here and there, or maybe made less mistakes, that mistake I made on lap two at the Dipper was a very pivotal error, and it really put me on the back foot in terms of cars behind getting my slipstream, and that kind of brought multiple cars into the fight. 
and uh, I ultimately, though, ended up in third with 247 points. It's even better than my previous score from uh, the start of the season at Interlagos in the Supra. But we're going to have a look at this massive incident that kind of kicked off on lap 12. So this is where it started. Have a look at this. The Mercedes goes down the inside and actually leaves the Ferrari plenty of room. I think the Ferrari turned in a bit too much in my opinion, but that just slows them both up. So I sent it down the outside and into the braking zone here. I knew I broke later than Ferrari, but there's a bump there actually from Corey Hack. There's actually two. And then he leans on both of us on the exit. So, oh, wow, that's a bit how you're going. But let's have a look at turn one. We'll, re we'll have another look at the uh, previous incident. Oh my goodness, looks like Diego turns across or comes further to the outside, not expecting two cars to be there. I think he just knew the Ferrari was there, but I guess Diego didn't know I was there, and I was the one, unfortunately, on the outside, which is not where you want to be at the end of the day, in general. And you can see I flash my headlights. So, initially, I did think it was the Ferrari that came across, but I was actually incorrect. There was another car on the inside of the Ferrari. But as we have a look at this second, at this final corner move, there was definitely two bumps there by Diego, and then he lent on, on, uh, on both of us on the exit. So, let's have a look from this perspective. We'll be able to see his throttle and braking tray. So he bumps in there, that's no issue. But into the braking zone, bump, lifts off the brake, and bump again. Now that looks like a bump and run to me. Um, so I would probably label that dirty driving, to be honest, because he let off the brakes and made contact. That's dirty driving. And then this incident here, you see my Toyota 86 thoroughly sideways on the entry to turn one. It's not how you want to be. Uh, Diego is definitely coming across. He's definitely diagonal down the straight there. Coming across to the Ferrari. Probably, that is probably more bad driving than dirty driving. This, this angle will probably tell us a bit more of the story. Yeah, definitely. I'll probably call that bad driving at the first corner there. I don't know if Diego knew there were two cars on the outside. I think he just thought the Ferrari was there and was wondering why he was so far to the middle of the track. Um, but yes, unfortunately I was on the outside and uh, I was the one that came off the worst out of that. But ultimately that kind of worked out. So Diego sort of gave, gave away his positions after running down uh, the chase too deep and uh, Corey Hack crashed out as well. So I would say that what goes around comes around. Those two drivers sort of got, I don't want to say got what they deserve. I'll probably say that for Corey because I definitely think that final corner incident was dirty driving. But as far as Diego goes, I wouldn't say he deserved to sort of lose out there, but I think he uh, just made a mistake on the first corner there. And we all make mistakes. It's unfortunate, but uh, it's unfortunate that I came off the worst out of it, but at the end of the day, I've picked up second, uh, picked up third, picked up the podium, and I'll take that on my home circuit. So that's going to round out this one today. Do hit the like button if you enjoyed, and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. Do leave a comment as well. Questions, comments, constructive criticism as always, very much appreciated. But that's from the end of this one today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.